following uh, is another video in a series uh, about how to incorporate Python scripting into ArcGIS. Uh, we will eventually get to some videos that actually deal with uh, using Python within ArcGIS, incorporating the ArcPy module. Uh, but until we get to that point, I wanted to go through some videos that introduce the basic uh, syntax and language structure just so that you can have a little greater versatility when working with an ArcGIS. Uh, disclaimer that I'll throw in front of each of the Python videos, I am not a programmer or coder by trade. I learned Python within the context of ArcGIS and then broadened my skills uh, a little bit outside of ArcGIS just to have a little greater understanding. Uh, so the way I'm structuring these videos, they're really meant for, for beginners or people that just want to be conversational with Python and eventually use it within ArcGIS. Um, you know, they won't dive real deeply into, uh, you know, theories or, or uh, you know, very deep syntax or program structure, um, you know, beyond just the basics that I feel are good to understand before working in ArcGIS. Uh, so this is probably one of the, the more important videos that we're going to run over, and uh, it's going to start to get into conditionals and, and loops, which are one of the things that really give, um, you know, Python just a great amount of versatility to be able to branch off in multiple different directions, uh, you know, or to iterate through something, um, you know, a series of times, or really just to handle, uh, you know, solid logic problems. And we're going to cover three today uh, that are that are really foundational, and that's an if statement, uh, a for statement, and a while statement. Um, you know, so I think the if statement's probably the easiest to start, and so we'll go with that one first. I'm going to define all of these with the, within the context, uh, you know, of a, of a function, just so that we can be relearning skills we had uh, previously. So I'm going to, you know, define simple if, right? Just to remind us, we're doing a simple if function, and uh, this simple if we're going to have, you know, your number is going to be a raw input, rather going to be an integer of the raw input of please enter a number between 0 and 20. We're going to not build any logic into this. Oops. You know, you could build the script in such a way, and perhaps we'll do it in a future video where this continually resets until they actually enter. Uh, but let's just assume that they follow us and enter between 0 and 20. Oops. Edit. Didn't go all the way down. All right, so they have something that's called your number, and we simply set it up by saying if your number and we could say if your number is, let's say, greater than 10, you know, you'll be considered high. And we'll say else, oops, that's way too long. So if it's greater than 10, you'll print number is high, else number is low. So let's just sit down for a moment and we'll, we'll kind of unpackage this script here. Uh, really simple. They're going to give a number that's going to be stored in a, in a variable called your number. And we're going to test something. We're going to say if your number happens to be greater than the number 10, then we'll return that it's high. Else means anything else of course, right? So regardless of what else happens, if it's not higher than 10, then this is what will happen. And you can run your function. Simple if. What's my number? Well, I'll put 9. Number is low. Let's run it again. Uh, let's say it's going to be 11, right? Number is high. All right, so that's the very basics of it. However, sometimes, let's say simple if2, it's not just about one or the other, and that's kind of critical with if, right? You can imagine that uh, in addition to saying if something's true, you might want to say, well, if that's not true, um, you know, what about something else? And I think, you know, what we'll do here is we'll say, uh, you know, same thing, your, your number is going to equal, you know, turning an integer into whatever the raw input that they put. Please enter a number between 0 and 20. Oops, wrong one. Sorry. And we'll say if your number equals 10. So we'll start off with something new, equals 10. And I'm doing that because I really want to point something out to you. When you start using your if statements, you're entering a form, um, you know, of Boolean logic here. And essentially what you're doing is you're testing for true and false. And when you test using an equal sign, it cannot look like this. 
all right? The single equal is meant if you're setting a variable equal to something else. The double equal is Boolean, and what it means is equal. So it's a way that you're kind of testing. It's just a muscle memory thing that you've got to make sure you keep going. Now this means does not equal, just so you can kind of increase your, your, uh, you know, your, um, your muscle memory with the language. But for now, we're really saying if you equal 10, we're going to print your number. And we'll make the name say, well, your number, we'll say comma, your number, so that they can be reminded. We'll say you inputted, you input, put that down. You input your number. This is exactly 10. And get all upset. have to put a uh, colon, very important thing there. Whenever you're doing a, a, an if statement, um, once you complete your logical line, you need to make sure you close it with a uh, colon. Oops, what did I do there? That's what I meant. Three numbers. Let's make this a, give me one minute tutorial. That's why. I'm inventing parentheses where they don't exist. All right, so we got our if. What I'm going to teach you now is something called elif, right? So what elif means is if that's not true, then this. So really the purpose of elif is if you need to test for multiple things that could be true. So if it equals 10, that's great, but it might not equal 10. You know, so elif, if your number is greater than 10, then we'll print you input whatever your number was. This is greater And then finally, right, we don't need to specify, you know, that it's below a certain thing. You know, we could say, uh, you know, maybe one thing we want to do is we'll say, how about this, just with some sense. We'll say, elif, your number is greater than 5 and your number is uh, less than 10. And notice that you can use ands and ors with this, too. All you have to do is make sure that you're retesting your query, right? So I have to type your number again. So really what I'm translating here is it between 5 and 10. And if so, I'll say print you input your number. This is between 5 and 10. And then finally, we'll just say else, right? Because the only other thing would be, uh, you know, hopefully below, um, you know, unless the user tricks me and enters something higher than 20, but then it would just say that you're greater than 10. So we'll say else uh, print you input your number. This is less than five. All right, and then we can run the script. We'll say simple if two. My bad. <laughs> simple if two. It's going to enter a number. Let's try first to enter exactly 10. Right, we input 10. This is exactly 10. All right, the script is working. Right, simple if two. This time we'll put seven. Right, this is seven. It's between five and ten. Right, so it's just calling whichever uh, one of the the items uh, happen to be correct there. So that's an if, right? So an if is really testing, and then it's branching off in multiple directions depending upon that test. Uh, the next important one is a for statement, and what a for is meant to do is simply iterate through uh, a sequence. Right, so it could iterate through a range of numbers. It could iterate through objects. You know, like eventually when you bring this into ArcGIS, you might want to iterate through all of the shape files that are within a folder. You might want to iterate through all of the fields, or you might want to iterate through all of the records or the rows, or all of the fields that have a certain value. All right, so but that's the point of four, is you iterate through each of those rows, and then based on what they encounter in that row, or that object, or that list, or that number, you know, you can do any number of things. And now the basic syntax with four is you simply say four, I'm going to write each here for a moment, but we're going to come back to it. It does not need to be each. So for each in cheese, print each. And what you'll see is it printed C-H-E-E-S-E. -E -E. So let's talk through the syntax of that sentence here. Really what four is saying is for each item each object. 
each character, right? So if you're doing a range of numbers, it'd be each number. Because we did a string sentence right here, it's each character in the string sentence here. Right? If we did a list, it would be each item in a list. If it were shape files, it would be each shape file. If it were fields, it would be each field. The word each, right? when I first learned this, always got me very confused, because when you see someone write for each and cheese, you think that you know each is the reserved word. But notice the only reserved words here are for and in. This could be anything. right? This could be for jangle boots and cheese. And notice, all I have to do is print the word jangle boots. I'm essentially creating a variable on the fly that through each iteration will temporarily store each item in the sequence. It'll store C, and then H, and then E, and then E, and then S, and then E. Right? So printing jangle boots. It runs exactly the same. All that matters is when I'm doing something, I just have to make sure that for blank, right? For whatever I choose to input, I remain constant in calling that through the various iterations of the list. You can also iterate through numbers, right? For uh, numbers, I'm going to make it easier in a range of, let's say, 0 to 20. And what we'll do is we'll print number. Well, we'll just call it for number, right? Print number uh, times 2, right? So we're just going to take each of these numbers and double them. And that's what happens. 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, da, da, da. Notice that it does not do 20, right? So it stops before 20, just something uh, key to keep in mind. So that's the basic syntax of a for, right? For whatever in a range, and it'll run through. And it can do hundreds and hundreds of rows of code, right? We'll see a little bit later how we can actually nest if statements within for statements, but the, but the basic syntax is really the same. You're iterating through numbers, you're iterating through characters, you're iterating through items in a list, you're iterating through objects. And the final is while. And what while simply means is, you know, so long as something is true. Right? So we'll set up a very different one. While, well, let's first start by saying x equals 0. So we have an x to reference. And we'll say while x uh, is less than 10, uh, what we'll do is we'll print. The first thing we'll do is we'll say x will now equal x plus 1. And we'll say print. This is iteration number x Oops. This is right now. So, while x is less than 10 x equals x plus 1 this is iteration uh, we did not say anything aha here we go uh, lowercase x is greater than 10. x given to its old self plus 1. And we will print this is iteration x. Okay, sorry about that. So again, let's walk through exactly what's happening. We set something up here called x named 0. Right? That's why it tripped up the second time, because I had a capital X and we hadn't defined that at any point. So x originally starts as 0. And so we say, so long as that variable x is less than 10, do everything that's contained under the while statement. All right? So we'll say x should equal x plus 1. So the first thing that's going to happen is what used to be 0 in that first iteration is now going to be 1. Right? So essentially, we're building a counter here so it can test itself at the next start of the next while loop. And then after that, we print this as iteration and take whatever value is being stored. Right? So it started as 0. We added 1. So this is iteration 1. Starts over again and tests itself. Is 1 less than 10? 1 is definitely less than 10. So then 1 now becomes 2, and we print this is iteration 2, and this keeps going up until 10. It loops back around, it finds that 10 is not less than 10, and then it quits out of the loop. As you can imagine, while loops can be very, very dangerous. If you string yourself uh, or set your sentence up in the wrong way, you can create what's called an endless infinity loop. Right? So why don't we instead say, so long as x uh, is greater than or equal to 0. All right, well, let's reset it first. We'll say x equals 0. And we'll say so long as x is greater than or equal to 0, x will equal x plus 1. And we will print this is iteration x. Now, it's going to go really quick 
So let's just look at this, right? We're going to start with zero. It's going to say is zero greater than or equal to zero. Definitely is add one. Print this is iteration zero. Right? Is one greater than or equal to zero? Absolutely. And hopefully you can see where I'm going here. I made the test greater than zero and we're adding numbers. So it's only going to get higher and higher in the positive and therefore always be above zero. And what you'll end up seeing is a script like this that just runs and runs and runs and runs and runs and runs until it eventually crashes your computer. All right, so that's the basic introduction to uh, if, for, and while. Uh, I'm going to have some follow-up videos. There'll be one on looping, continuing, and breaking. Uh, you know, we just talked through the for and the while queries right here. Uh, but you're often going to want to figure out ways that, you know, if you encounter something, you need to move on. Or if you encounter something bad, you need to break out of a loop. Um, you know, if you encounter something, you might just want to pass on and, and do nothing. Um, and so we're going to go over those. And then there'll also be a tutorial video where we walk through a script that has uh, fours and ifs nested, just so we can talk a little bit more about what they look like um, in action.